so I know you mentioned your reverse vending machines and we read that Tamra is the world leader in the field of reverse vending and reverse vending is something that feels kind of like a new concept. I don't, I've never personally seen a reverse vending machine, but I think it's super cool technology. Can you explain um, just more about it when you guys started this part of your business and um, where are your reverse vending machines at right now? Sure. So most of them are um, in the 10 states that have container deposit laws where you go to the store and if you buy a container, that uh, that container actually has a financial value. Um, So that's where that's where these reverse spending machines um, are offered um, and where they make economic sense. So they're in they're in 10 states, um, mostly California, Hawaii, Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, Iowa and Michigan. Um, are the, the the deposit states? Which state are you guys in? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay, with the high school in Philly. Great. <laughs> uh, uh, not, does not have a deposit system as of yet, um, but you do have a massive recycling facility, uh, Carbon Light, um, or at least it's being built. Um, uh, yeah. So that so that's where RVMs or reverse vending machines we call them RVMs are um, are in place. It's um, not necessarily a new concept, but the technology is getting better every few years. Uh, it was started, the first automated RVM was invented by Tamra's founders, the, the Planke brothers, um, for a retailer who, there was a deposit system in Norway and the retailer was having trouble accepting all these cans and bottles by hand and paying out the deposit. And so he asked um, these brothers for, for help. They were engineers and they designed the first fully automated RVM to just take that off the retailer's hands. Um, and yeah, so what they do is they, they automate the process. So the retailer just needs to spend maybe like uh, 15% of the amount of time they would need to spend taking back these cans and bottles um, so they can spend time, you know, working on the shelf or, hand, or working with customers. Um, it, it literally scans the barcode of the container that goes through. So that's really important because then that tells the uh, distributor of that product um, to A, to hey, come back, pick up your product to recycle it, and it knows which one to charge. Typically, they're charged a small handling fee for, um, to the retailer to help them for their, their collection services. Um, so that's a big part of it. So it keeps track of every container. And then critically, and a lot of people don't know this, the RVMs um, in almost all cases come packed the containers. So they're not just sitting there or they're not sitting in bags. Um, and that's critical because that saves a lot of space, both at the retailer, but critically on the truck as it's picked up. So you can like for a can, you know, an uncompacted can, you can fit um, when compacted, that's the equivalent to six cans. And so that fits far more um, containers, same n- more number of containers on the truck that makes the logistics far more efficient. So you're literally avoiding um, the number of trucks that are needed on the road to perform all these pickups. So it's a a more um, efficient system that saves a lot of um, energy use, a lot of um, cost, of course, and then carbon. The carbon footprint of the deposit system is is reduced um, thanks to this compaction. And and RVMs compact them at the point of redemption, and that makes it far more cost effective and and carbon efficient. So those are some of the sort of some of the bigger benefits. Um, of uh, RVM use. And in general, you know, I mean, there is um, cost of business are going up and labor costs are going up. And so RVMs are a way to stabilize that cost, keep it um, cost competitive, even as these systems add new beverages like kombucha or go to 10 cents where there's more volume in the system. So that's part of the selling point as well. So that's really interesting that they do the compaction, which is really important. And I'm just curious, the RVM in those bottle bill states, you know, everybody's probably thinking in their head, it's mainly plastics and aluminum, but I would assume, do they accept glass as well? Like usually kombucha is coming in glass bottles, I see in many cases. So that is something that the glass can go in as well. They do. Um, and it's, it's critical that they accept glass. I mean, there are some machines that literally it's one machine, one hole, and they'll accept all three materials and it's sorted out in three different bins. Um, there, or if you're at a large uh, redemption center, which is like just a standalone recycling, oh, this could be at a retailer too, if they have the space, but um, you can put, yeah, just through one hole and it is sorted out on the back end. Like there's, there's 
in other words, you just see the front interface of the machine, but behind a wall, there's uh, a lot of conveyor belts to sort these containers in the back end. Um, or there's literally a machine for glass, a, a machine for aluminum, and one for uh, plastic as well. So it kind of depends on the um, investment level. Um, but it's critical they include glass because I'm, I'm sure you guys are aware that there's a real challenge to recycle glass in the U.S. Um, the single stream glass situation is has not really worked out unless you've made some investments in optical sorters. Um, and, um, you know, our good friends of the Glass Packaging Institute, um, because they are looking to increase the, recycle, the, the recycling rate of glass going right back into glass bottles. Um, and they just put out a statement along with the P the PET Container Association, NAPCOR, um, and the Can Manufacturers Institute saying that they're in support of modernizing deposit systems, container deposit systems, because um, it's the fastest, it's the best way to get back more of their material and to preserve the quality of that material. So the glass is, is essentially, you know, just kept in with glass. It's not mingled um, with, with food and all that other stuff. So it can actually go back into food contact um, beverage packaging. Um, so that's that's part of the reason why we have our processing facilities in upstate New York, um, particularly to um, handle glass. And there are glass markets in the Northeast, and it goes directly from our processing facilities to um, glass container manufacturers, um, like Anchor Glass, for example, um, and it goes right back on the shelf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really great. And that is one of the problems with uh, our new modern system of single stream recycling where you commingle everything, you know, you end up getting a lot of contamination. So it sounds like the RVMs do a good job of separating and giving better quality bales or, or compacted materials and that eliminate the contamination and make the materials more valuable.